Welcome back to my school bus conversion project. In this video, I'm going to be tackling something I've wanted to do for a while, which is to make an articulated camera arm to film things inside the bus. Well, that took about half an hour, but I was finally able to thread the last 20 centimeters or so of this. And you will see why I need to do that later. I originally planned to do that using uh, this drill, uh, to ch just chuck it in the drill and run it through the die. The problem is that uh, while these brushless drills have a ton of torque, the chuck isn't all that great. Uh, at holding on to stuff, and so it would just slip in the chuck. So I had to do this by hand on the lathe. Now the thing with uh, the lathe is that I don't currently have a good way to film it. Uh, so that is why there is no footage of that, but in the future, now thanks to this project, I will be able to film things on the lathe. So these parallelogram mechanisms need something to keep them from just uh, bending down under their own weight. Normally the way that this is done is that you've got a spring that runs from uh, one corner to somewhere along the bottom bar and that provides tension that holds it. Uh, and I'm going to use that for the top part, but for the bottom part I want to make sure that uh, when it turns relative to the top part uh, it doesn't create a torque, because while these uh, are good at just handling a point load, they, they're not really good at handling twisting forces. So rather than using a, uh, a spring, I intend to use a counterweight. So that's the purpose of this threaded section. The idea is that I'll have a counterweight and I can adjust its position along the thread. Now for a counterweight, I've got this big uh, bar of two and a half inch round steel. Uh, and this is a lot more material than I need for a counterweight because it's only counterweighting the weight of, uh, right now a phone camera. So I'm going to chop a section off of this and then drill a hole through it so I can position it along this, uh, threaded bar, uh, and then we'll have our counterweight. And this seems like a much more reasonable size for a counterweight. So now I've just got to drill a hole through this. And I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to drill a clearance hole most of the way through uh, and then just drill the very bottom with the tap size drill uh, for the threads because it's kind of pointless to thread uh, a hole all the way through here when you only need a couple threads to hold this in place. And it's not like th this is a joint that needs to support tens of thousands of pounds or anything. So yeah, I, I'm that way it'll be a lot easier to thread on uh, by hand if I don't put the threads all the way through. So for the upper section, I am still using springs because that is only moving on a single axis. Uh, and the springs need somewhere to attach to. Uh, at the top, it'll just attach to the bolt. Um, but I don't know exactly where along here I need to have the springs attached to, and that's gonna depend on uh, how strong the springs are and uh, how much weight I have on the camera end. So what I did is I made this little clamp, uh, which clamps around here, uh, and then I can put a quarter inch screw, or quarter inch bolt rather, through that. Um, and that will clamp it in place and provide a point that I can attach the springs to. And I can adjust that up and down uh, 
this rod to control where I want the springs to attach to. I think I might have destroyed those threads a little bit during welding. Let's see. So something to be aware of is if you're welding near a threaded hole, then even if the melt zone doesn't go into the threads, it can still distort the hole enough that uh, a bolt won't thread into it properly. So I've just run a quarter inch tap through here, uh, and now I can thread a bolt through this. Now that clamp is pretty securely locked in place. Uh, I don't have the springs yet. Uh, I can't really uh, get them right now because it's the middle of the night. So for the moment, I'm just gonna take some bailing wire uh, and use that to hold this in a sort of fixed location. So I can at least test it. down at like that angle. So that will stand in for the spring for now and just hold that at a fixed position. Uh, I also changed my mind about uh, this counterweight. Originally I was going to uh, put a thread in the weight and then I'd have to spin the weight all the way down. But that's a bit of a pain, so it, instead I just drilled a through hole all the way through the weight, uh, and then I just put a bolt on, or a nut on each side, and use those to hold the weight in its position. It's a lot simpler that way. I also want to replace this quarter inch bolt with a quarter inch shoulder bolt so that uh, it'll pivot more smoothly uh, and the threads won't end up chewing up the hole. But again, it's the middle of the night so I can't get a uh, shoulder bolt. So just testing with what I have. This is probably going to be easier if I clamp those together. There. Now things won't be moving on their own. Obviously, this should be tightened with the appropriate socket wrench, but this is just a test. And similarly at this end, I need to put another bolt through here. Eventually I also want to make this its own gantry but for now I've just got it uh, clamped to the gantry for my crane uh, with a pair of vice grips. But this seems to be working pretty well. Uh, I have the counterweight set, so I've got a different phone, obviously not the phone that I'm currently recording this video on because then you wouldn't be able to see it uh, in the clip there. And I can move this up or down and it'll hold its position thanks to the counterweight. I can move the phone around and position it wherever I want. Uh, I can't move this up or down right now because right now it's just held in place with bailing wire, but once I have that with the springs, I can do that. And then I can uh, adjust the angle of the whole thing uh, to move it to any place. And if I want to move it further, uh, then I can slide the whole thing 
along the gantry rails. So now I have a way to put the camera anywhere in the workshop. Obviously this end here, uh, right now I've just got this mounted directly to there. Uh, I've got a little three axis gimbling uh, mount that I can't find right now. I've found this one axis one that I c came with a GoPro knockoff kit, but I don't know where the one that I'm actually looking for is. So I'll have a look for that tomorrow and see if I can find that. And that'll keep me from having tilted camera. But, uh, and then that'll also mean that I can do things like uh, if I want to put the camera back here, then I can turn it around and get a shot facing outwards towards the aisle, which is one that I definitely would not be able to get with the tripod. <laughs> is more properly assembled. I ended up having to just stretch the springs all the way uh, from the start to the end of the upper section. Uh, this is partly because I didn't know exactly how strong the springs needed to be, uh, so I just picked springs that felt about right when I was at the hardware store and they turned out to be not quite as strong as I'd been hoping for. Um, and then uh, I found my camera mount that has a ball mount so I can position this however I want, uh, and I've uh, adjusted the counterweight uh, for that, so now I can position this uh, anywhere I like. Well, I think that'll about cover this um, camera arm for now. This will probably be the last time that you see this arm in a video, because in future videos it will be behind the camera, but this should allow me uh, much easier job of actually getting the footage that I need to film future videos. Well, that's about it for this project. See you next time with some better camera angles.